what you guys got another video here for you now this one is on how to optimize windows 10 for performance and for gaming you're probably going to see that title on youtube all over the place where you can get 300 percent more performance boost and all of these uh types of claims but no one ever shows you the before and after and it's because there is no massive gain when you do a lot of these tweaks just a lot of headaches and a lot of broken PCs. So let me show you exactly what all these tweaks are and what they actually mean and what you're uh, gonna get from these particular types of tweaks. I'm gonna explain a lot of this stuff throughout the video and towards the end of the video where you'll see some benchmarks and differences as well, which a lot of people don't ever show because there is no real difference. So first off, power and sleep settings. We're gonna go into here, and this is an, a common one that people see so you can see here by default, it's bang smack in the middle, uh, best energy saving and performance, and we've got it in the middle. We've also got it set to balanced, which is by default, it's normally on balanced. And I'll show you exactly what this is like when I benchmark this PC when it's just stock and I've done no tweaks, uh, no tampering with any of these settings whatsoever. Okay, so let's go ahead. So I'll run heaven benchmark here. And we'll get a benchmark score and I'll show you exactly what that benchmark score is. And then we'll do a bunch of different tweaks to the system and I'll run the same benchmark and you'll be able to see. So this was with stock settings, no tweaks whatsoever. I'll take a screenshot of that and I'll show you it at the end. So one of the common ones I see is changing your DNS server for better gaming experience, lower pings, lower latency. And this is all fake and it's no... Uh, truth in this whatsoever you're not going to get any better ping or latency by using a uh, google dns or any of the other types of dns servers out there now if you're using a really bad dns server and you are literally surfing the web you may get a better browsing experience when using the web but you're not going to get any better gaming experience when using a dns server so i've got that set Let's go ahead and do something else, which is power and sleep settings. Let's now boost this up to best performance because obviously that's what we want. We want more performance from our PC. So let's boost this up and we're going to change this from balanced and we're going to go to high performance. Yes, there is ultra performance, but this is uh, another setting which you can change. But I'm just going to show you it's not going to make much difference, if any at all. So we're going to go ahead and change those as well. So let's go into the control panel. NVIDIA control panel is another one I see. People go into here just, and they use the performance enhancing and put this on performance and think that this is going to make a massive difference to your uh, gaming experience. And then go into here and make a bunch of different tweaks. And I've done all those before, and they don't make much difference to the system. What it's going to do is if you've got a really old computer, it's going to basically... Uh, make that a little bit more enjoyable, including uh, if you've got an older graphics card. Another thing I see, which is a very old tweak, which is adjust for best performance inside here, but it makes Windows look absolutely dreadful. As you can see here, when I apply this, all of the colors look washed out. And these sort of tweaks were used on really old systems back in the day, but we're in the modern day where we're running super fast PCs where this is not going to make much difference apart from making your windows look horrible. Oh, let's go ahead while we're at it and we're going to go ahead and uh, defrag our drive and also optimize the drive because that's going to make a difference as well. Windows normally takes care of this in the background, but we'll do it just to uh, appease the gods and we'll literally optimize that drive there and uh, close that off. So that's now done. And of course, we're going to clean all our temp files because that's really going to make a difference to our gaming performance when we clean all of this stuff out. Um, and it's not going to make much difference, to be honest with you. But you can go ahead and do what I'm doing here. And literally, what it's going to do is clean all the junk files out of your PC. And again, there's loads of other little tweaks uh, that I could do. And I've done a few others off camera because I'm not going to spend the whole time making loads and loads of tweaks uh, and just show you the end result. But I will do a, a benchmark and you'll see that benchmark with some of these things that are happening here. So let's go ahead and disable a bunch of services because that's another thing that people like to do. And of course, it gives performance back to the system. 
Now, this may be true if you've got a really old computer and it's struggling. Maybe you've got four gigs of RAM and you've got an old third gen uh, processor or something like that. And you may want to turn a bunch of this stuff off. But if you're trying to game on an old system like that, then you're going to end up with micro freezing and stuttering and also uh, high CPU usage and things like that because it's going to bottleneck and it's not designed to play games on, say, Dell Optiplexes that were made for office use. Another thing is going inside your uh, add and remove programs and removing a load of programs. How that is going to help your gaming performance, I do not know. So we're going to go in here and take another look and turn off all of the startup programs. Literally disable all of these. I've gone ahead and disabled on. It takes me a while to do them, but I've done them and I'll run the benchmark so you can see that it's not going to make no difference. Now, if you're running a really old computer, which some people are, then making some of these modifications and tweaks might make your experience that little bit more enjoyable, especially if you're on a mechanical drive and you've got a bunch of other uh, things that you might want to change, then it will help a little bit. So let's run that benchmark. And I did some other tweaks too, uh, which I'm not going to go into here because some of them uh, were a little bit sketchy. But as you can see here, there is the results. It's actually got a lower score than the previous benchmark. I'll show you them both side by side so you can actually see. And it didn't make any difference. In fact, it actually harmed uh, my overall score. And that's because when you run benchmark scores like these, there is going to be slight minor changes to those benchmark scores every time you run them. But there's not a massive difference after spending all that time tweaking the system. You can see the overall score with tweaks was 3,512 compared to before the tweaks was 3,599. Now, there is a little discrepancy on the mid minimum uh, frames per second, but that is because there's probably a software glitch there. And I will run that again to clarify that. But max FPS is 280.9 with the tweaks and 298.1 before I did any tweaks. And they're exactly the same settings and benchmarks. And that's because YouTubers that put these titles in their uh, uh, videos like uh, bring lower latency, lower pings, and they do these graphics where you can see 300% boost after running these tweaks. They are just clickbait and people are falling for it every single day. You can do this all day long, and it's not going to make any difference to your PC, if any. It's going to be so marginal, it's not going to be worth even considered spending all that time doing. So let's go ahead. I've reset the PC back, and we're going to run with no tweaks whatsoever. And you can see the score there, 3,629. It's actually the best score out of all of them, and that's with no tweaks. And now we've got that minimum frames per second up to 47.9, and the maximum frames per second up to 284.9. So are these optimization tweaks any good for anyone? Well, if you've got a very old system, maybe you've got an old uh, Pentium first gen, second gen, third gen, one of these older systems, maybe an older AMD system, and you're not talking about Ryzen, you're talking about an older system that you're trying to get a much more better usable experience and squeeze a bit more life out of it, then these optimizations might help a little bit in the sense of, uh, you know, giving you a bit more resources. It's not going to give you a massive amount of difference when it comes to gaming. You're not going to get go from 100 frames per second to 300 frames per second, like I've seen some of the, um, you know, the thumbnails on their videos. These are all fake and they are just clickbait. And these YouTubers that are spreading this stuff is just absolutely ludicrous. It really is. So if you've got an older system and you've only got four gigabytes of RAM and you're running Windows 10, it's going to be slow. And you've got an older first gen, second gen, third gen. You're going to get some bottlenecking when you're putting some uh, GPUs in there. You might need to think about upgrading your system at a later date. So reducing all of these resources and turning things off might give you a bit more better experience. But at the end of the day, the only real way you're going to get a performance boost at your PC is for these reasons right here. And I'll give them to you right now. So overclocking the CPU, GPU or RAM is going to give you a bit more performance with the system that you're running right now. So that is how you can get better performance out of that system. Upgrading from a mechanical drive to an SSD will give you a much more better experience with that system. It's going to boost a bit of performance from that PC rather than doing all these little minor tweaks to the PC, then upgrade to an SSD. 
upgrading the CPU, the GPU and RAM to better quality and much more faster is going to give you a better performance boost in the long run. Also having a better monitor, 144 hertz with a graphics card that can actually uh, deliver that amount of uh, frame rates is going to be a better option than doing all these silly little tweaks that are not going to give you any sort of performance boost that you're expecting. Having better internet speed is another thing. If you've got better internet, you are going to have a better experience playing first person shooters and things like that. Now, these YouTubers know who they are. I'm not going to name and shame them on the internet, but there is a plenty of them out there that are doing this nonsense. And to be honest with you, these tweaks are for very low end systems, old computers that have low memory, uh, an old CPU and an old GPU, and you want to get a better performance from them. It's going to give you a slight little better, better experience by turning off all of those features and uh, you should have much more resources. Debloat in Windows 10, again, is going to take away some load off the PC and have you use the PC in a better way if you've got a very low-end system. If you've got a modern-day computer, then debloating is not going to make much difference uh, in performance. Turning off features and all these tweaks can only help uh, making the system run a bit smoother on a low-end system. And that's about it, really. So the system I was using in here was the Ryzen 3800X and it had a 1660 uh, Super in here and you can see the results here. It's got 32 gigabytes of RAM in this system. Doing any sort of Windows tweak on here is not going to get squeeze any more performance out of that GPU. You're not going to. The only way you're going to get more performance out of it is if I overclock the GPU and overclock the CPU and RAM, which is already overclocked. So you're not going to get much more out of it by making those silly little adjustments in windows anyway i think that's going to be about it for this video i think i've done enough ranting here if you do want to debate this topic by all means you can join our discord server and i'll be happy to debate with you on this topic because i know for a fact that it's not going to make a massive difference to your system if you've got a modern day computer and i would love to see someone making a video showing me before and after where they're getting 300 frames boost by just using tweaks like that because I'll be amazed. Um, I may be even a convert to that sort of nonsense. But hey, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching, guys. Bye for now.